Hello, good afternoon everyone. I'm Wilson Wong. Today I'm going to share with you how to grow microgreens at home. To start, probably I will want to now go through with you and introduce to you what is a microgreen. Right? So draw attention to this tray here. This is your tou miao, also called pea sprouts. Uh, this is a very good example of a very common microgreen. Okay, so this common microgreen is usually grown in a media, all right, and it takes about up to two weeks, seven days to two, uh, 14 days to harvest, and you need a little bit of light so that it stays it is green. Okay, in the center, this is something that I'm pretty sure most of you will know what it is. It's your bean sprouts, all right, and the common name because the sprout is there. I use it as an example of what we call a sprout. Okay, very often you will come across the terms with microgreen sprouts and baby leaf. So sprout, okay, as you can see, it's all white. All right? It is grown in the absence of light and they are grown without a media. Okay? And they are harvested within a week from germination. Then on the right here, this is baby spinach leaves. And you can see them as a very common ingredient in our salads. So it is called a baby leaf, all right, because it's the young leaf of the plant. And across the board, this is the one that will take the longest to grow, all right, to harvest. And it needs a substrate and needs light to grow. So let's take a recap on some of the things that I mentioned just now. What is a sprout? What is a microgreen? And what is a baby leaf? Okay, all right, so let's take a look at some examples of microgreens. Over here, I put three different microgreens together and you can see that they look wonderful. It looks like a little potted garden. On the right, I have cress. In the middle, I have wheat grass. And on the side, I have the amaranth, the red amaranth or the Chinese spinach, the red one. It's grown inside a media. I use peat moss, or you can also use cocoa peat. In this small little bowl, all right, I grew cress seeds in some moist tissue paper. So you will be wondering why some I grow them in a media, while others I grow them in tissue paper. Okay, let me just tell you the reason why. Now let's take a look at the size of the seeds. All right. So you can see that the crest seeds are very tiny, whereas the sunflower seeds are very big. All right. So these two seeds, all right, depending on the size, we use the kind of uh, the appropriate kind of media to grow. Of course, you can grow the both of them in, say, peat moss or cocoa peat. Some people would prefer to grow it in tissue paper because it's kind of cleaner. You don't have all that soy bits that's attached to the greens. So usually we grow the smaller ones in tissue paper. Why? Because you know the seeds are small, they are in good contact with the moist tissue paper, and hence they will germinate easily. Whereas for the larger seeds like sunflower seeds, okay, uh, they don't make good contact with the tissue paper. And hence, germination in tissue paper can be a little bit tricky to uh, manage. All right. So let me share with you the easy method of um, germinating your own microgreens using a substrate. Okay. I like to recycle materials, and this is a typical takeaway plastic container. All right. Uh, make sure you have the cover on. Okay, because the cover has a has a purpose here. So let me do something here. All right, I take away the cover, but you notice there are two plastic containers over here, okay, the base containers. All right, you'll be wondering why I have two containers, okay? One will be placed inside of the outer one, all right? So the, so the outer one, on the, which is placed at the bottom, will catch the excess water that comes out from the base of the planting hole, uh, of the drainage holes. The inner one, this one, will hold the media, and that's where you grow your seeds. But of course, you need to make drainage holes, right? So very easy. Take a pair of scissors, right? You cut the end here, okay, the corner. 
Can you see I make a very small hole here already? All right. You repeat it for the four corners. Okay. And that will do. So you don't need to go and use a, a, a soldering iron or a screwdriver or a drill to cut holes, uh, to make holes in the growing tray. All right. So I'll replace this into it. And let me that now demonstrate to you the next step. Um, in this case, I'm using peat moss. You can also use cocoa peat. All right. I try not to use garden soil because some of you will say, okay, why don't I go downstairs or take from my flower pot? All right, because soil contains clay most of the time and it tends to be too heavy and may contain um, pests and diseases that will co uh, come along with it. And if you use garden soil, it can affect the germination of your microgreen seeds. So now I'll just fill the, fill the inner tra uh, fill the trays. All right? I break up any big pieces into small uh, fine bits. Okay. Say what you need to do is to just make sure that it's about one cm or two cm thick. Don't need to go very. Uh, don't, don't need to fill it up too much. Next, I prepared some microgreen seeds. In this case, is sunflower seeds. Um, for large for larger seeds, okay, people will tend to soak it in water for about six hours or otherwise overnight. You can do so, say, maybe before you sleep. Tomorrow morning, you wake up, you just drain away the water and sow the seeds. Okay, the thing about this is that you don't sow it for any, I mean, soak it for any longer than six hours because the lack of oxygen in the water can affect seed germination. All right, and then later on, um, you know, bacteria and fungus may con uh, grow because due to, low, uh, due to the conditions, all right, and then it will affect your seed germination. So now, I have one cm worth of media here and I have seeds here. All right, so I'm just going to demonstrate the sowing of the seeds. You can sow it densely, okay? All right, you can sow it densely, but what you can do is to just spread them out evenly, okay? Don't go and put seed by seed, okay? It's going to take a lot of time. So you just put it in, all right? Um, just distribute them evenly. Okay, I'm going to show you how, uh, how it roughly looks like. Okay, so that just make sure that the seeds form a single layer and don't overlap. You don't let the seeds stack up. Okay, because otherwise when you have too many seeds later, it will hinder germination. And when it gets too crowded, you're not making the best use of the seeds. So once you have finished um, spreading out the seeds, okay, put in another layer of substrate. Okay, like what you can see that I'm actually breaking up the, the, the substrate because if it comes in clumps, okay, sometimes it comes in clumps. So, I covered the seeds. Next, add water. Okay, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to stop here. Just make sure that it's all moist throughout. It shouldn't be soggy wet. Okay, you shouldn't see it soaked in water. It should just be moist to touch and you're good to go. The next step, remember the cover? Yeah. Place it over. Don't have to close it tightly. Okay, the reason for why you, I put back the cover is to make sure that, you know, the soil or the media or the substrate inside there stays um, moist at all times. So during this time, all right, you can put it in front of your window balcony or corridor where it gets, you know, um, filtered sunshine, all right? And once you see that the seeds are starting to germinate, you know, they started to grow, you can remove the cover and let the microgreens continue to grow. And keep moist at all times. Don't let it dry out. I prefer to use a substrate like this because it's easier to manage the moisture. Okay, because if you use tissue paper, cotton wool, and what, uh, and similar materials, okay, it can dry out too fast, uh, and it's quite difficult to manage the moisture levels for the seeds. So you let it grow, just let it grow, okay, depending on the stage you want to harvest, depending on the sprout, uh, sorry, depending on the microgreen, you can harvest them within seven days to 14 days, all right? Usually we won't want to let it grow for too long because they'll become fibrous and it's not nice to eat. 
And when you harvest the microgreens, you can cut, you can use a pair of scissors and cut it at the base, all right? And take the amount that you need to cook, okay? Or to make your salad or your sandwich. You don't have to cut the whole lot, all right? You can cut, cut it successively. And my advice to you is this. Don't grow too much at one go because if you can't finish it, you know, uh, it's a waste. So let's not produce food waste, all right? So let's recap the steps and the materials that you need to grow your microgreens. Microgreens are actually very easy to grow, right? The crop cycle is very short, fast-free, no pests. There's not enough, there's not, it doesn't need a lot of space and you don't need a lot of time, don't need a lot of light, right? So it makes, microgreens makes a very good thing to grow for our kids. You know, nowadays our children don't like to eat vegetables. Probably by getting them involved in the activity that involves the growing of microgreens will make them want to try what they have grown. Okay, and it's important for our kids to know where their food comes from. So today, uh, I'm going to share with you how to make this gingerbread man pot man that you can grow your microgreens in. So I'm growing, I grow wheat grass. So you can see that my gingerbread man has a pretty funky hairstyle. All right, and it's actually ready to harvest. You can ask your child to cut, and then later you can you know, wheat grass. You can make it into a drink. All right, other sprouts. I'm sorry, other. Microgreens, why am I always saying sprouts? <laughs> That's why you can see it's always confused. So microgreens, you can harvest it and ask them to make a sandwich tomorrow. And because a lot of us are still working from home, so I believe this is a good time, a good activity as well, where the parents can bond with your child or your children at home to do something that's meaningful. All right, so let me put this away. Okay, let me share with you the materials that are needed. All right, so, well, the body of the, micro, uh, of the gingerbread man, you need a series of flower pots, okay? Other things that you require are cable ties, googly eyes that you can buy from the uh, craft shop, um, some twine, especially if you want to have something to go around it, uh, your gingerbread man, the icing, you know? And of course, you have buttons which you can buy from craft shop. At the same time, you can also recycle from your old clothes, all right? And these are uh, pretty cute um, teddy bear shaped ones, you know, I'm pretty sure you excite your child a lot. And of course, other kind of materials over here, like these cotton balls, you can use it to make the nose and uh, buttons also. And also ribbons, all right? You can recycle from your, from whatever that you're salvaged, from your cake boxes and so on. All right. So now let me share with you um, how do you put the put the uh, ginger pot man together. All right. So let me put this away for the for the time being. All right. So um, these are the pots that you, I require. All right. It's up to you. You can make bigger ones, smaller ones. Okay. But basically, let me show you the the concept uh, of putting it together and the sizing of the pots. So the one that forms the base of the body will be the largest pot. And the head will be slightly smaller, as you can see. And the hands or the arms, you can use smaller pots, okay? In this case, I'm using the smallest thumb pot that, you know, you buy your cactus in. Then you put it this way. So, of course, the thing about it here is that you may be asking me, Wilson, how do I put the whole thing together? Can I use tape? Can I use glue? Well, I find that those can be quite difficult to, you know, uh, put the things together because you need to hold it for a long time or they may break easily if you happen to drop it, right? So I prefer to use cable ties, okay? Uh, because it's fast and easy to do it, uh, to do. But of course, this requires the assistance from an adult, right? So what does the adult need to do? <laughs> Let me share with you. The larger pot, okay, you need to make holes on the side. Okay, two holes here, alright, careful, you can use a pair of scissors to do it, alright, yeah, next, another two more holes on the side to do it, okay, alright, so now, how do I string it together, so get a very long uh, 
cable tie, all right? Very long one, you need a long one. So it's easier to handle, all right? Okay. Oops, lucky to catch it. <laughs> all right, so you know there's this part that you put the cable tie through the head, the, this, this very broad side. This should be our side. The long tip of it goes through, okay? You have to make it go through the pot, the drainage hole. So you notice I cannot come out, all right? Next, your two holes that you have made on the side, on the large pot, string this through. Okay, pull it. There's another hole. String it through again. And then you put it through this pot, the smaller pot. And then you fasten it. Okay, the thing about it is this, you fasten enough Okay, to hold it in place, but don't make it too tight so at least you know it can move around. Right? So it, it, it's a bit cuter. Then once you're happy with the position, ask your kid, happy or not? Happy? Okay? Then you cut. Okay, let me do the other one. Same thing with the pot. The, 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 the broader bit is on the outside. Pass it through the hole here. Doesn't drop out. Pass it through this hole. Pull. Go through the other hole in the larger pot. Put it through this and the smaller pot. Okay, let me give me a while. That's why you can see long cable ties help because it's easier for us adults because our hands are big. Alright, we can't go into small little corners. Now you string it. Uh, fasten it. I'm going to do this properly so that, you know, uh, the adults watching this video knows what to do. So now the body and the arms are done. Now, now I need to string the head. So the same thing too. I string it, uh, I put it through the drainage hole of the smaller pot. I put it through the drainage hole of the larger pot. All right, put it through the other hole in the larger pot. I put it through the hole in the smaller pot. Now you know why my pot my pots are this big, right? Because my hands can go inside. It's done. Okay? The next step is, of course, to put in the range of things that I mentioned to you. Oops, you see my, my ribbon drop. Alright? Then you can just use a double-sided tape or glue stick to put to everything together. And for this step, involve your child to do it. Let their creative juices flow. And then you get your pot man. Alright? So let me put this away. So now, let me bring you back to my ready-made one, okay? You can actually grow your microgreens in a separate smaller pot first, like what I did, okay? Then uh, I can replace it into the head and then let, let the hair grow. You can grow of various different types and have different hairstyles. <laughs> and also at the same time, um, the reason why I did this is because um, it will not dirty the, you know, the interior of this pot. So that even though when there's no microgreen growing inside, it can still stay as a very beautiful, uh, nice table figurine. All right, so I hope that inspires. So let's recap the materials that you require. Hello, now 
There's another idea I have for you is to how you can make microgreens looking good on your, in your garden, on your dinner table, and so on. Okay, most of the time, you know, I, like I said, I like to advocate the use of recycled containers, food containers, whatnot, for growing stuff. But some people will say that, hey, Wilson, functional, la, you're, fun you're, you're, doing, you're living a sustainable lifestyle. But you know, it doesn't really look that good. I cannot put it on the dinner table. Not nice, lah. Right? So now, let me share with you how you can make it look good. Okay? So, what I did was that um, I grew a three, three different types of microgreens in nice bowls. Okay? Uh, well, they look much better than disposable food containers, don't they? <laughs> so, I have sunflower here. I have uh, pea sprouts here. Okay? Your tou miao. And also uh, wheat grass. Okay? So, I purposely try to grow you know, uh, plants, different microgreens so that they have different, um, you know, leaf textures and even color, all right? So you can try growing others that have color, all right? Uh, so that it, it is beautiful and nice to look at. So how do you put everything together looking nice? So number one, choosing nice containers is vital, all right? Of course, you can put it on a placemat, all right? Uh, this is available from home decor shops, you know. Uh, very easy. You can use a big dried leaf as well, all right? Uh, whatever that fits your home decor. So I put my placemat here. So tonight, I'm going to invite friends over for a hot pot uh, or for, you know, a meal, which, which, I can, which they can use microgreens, right? So what I'm going to do is that I have my placemat, all right? Then I just place my microgreens that I grew around it, looking nice, all right? Uh, then what I do is that, that's not the end, all right? The next step, you must be wondering, why is it? How can I make it even better? And even educational as well. So what I did was here is that I prepared, I bottled up seeds of the, the individual plants into, well, upcycled bottles. You know, I decorate the bottles a bit, put a sticker, use my handwriting to write so that they know, eh, they can connect. Hey, oh, this wheat grass, the seed look like that. Right up. And, you know, it, it looks presentable. You put it next to the microgreen that you have. So I have pea sprouts, pea seeds, and I have some flower. I can put it on this side. Okay. So when your guests come over and see, they can appreciate the plant. It makes a nice table. Uh, table centerpiece and also at the same time they can actually associate you know the seeds and they know where the food comes from to the microgreen and of course they will ask you the next question everybody after the after each um, session I, I do they'll say hey can I take back the seeds to grow exactly that's what we want to do okay you can say by all means take it home and try growing your own all right you can also grow a smaller one in a my smallest microgreens like cress inside a small little bowl here all right, and you can put it next, uh, crest seeds put next to it. This works too, all right? And of course, you can also, you know, decorate it further by putting flowers and other things around it and making it look good, all right? So can I say that this makes your microgreen um, garden, all right, a lot nicer to look at. They function as a home decor item, you know, which you can wow your visitors. I'm pretty sure nobody would have thought of using microgreens as a plant decor item for the home. Okay, so let's do another recap again before we move on to the last idea. The last idea I have, as you notice, is that it's all about lifestyle ideas that you can adopt using microgreens. Okay, so in front of me is a little gift box. All right, as you can see, in a few months' time, we're going to celebrate Christmas. 
But this is not just a Christmas gift item. You can use it for any other occasion that where you need to give a gift. And also to inspire your friends and family members, colleagues even, to start growing their own food. Alright, as you can see over here, I actually used a plastic cookie box, an uh, upcycled one. There was uh, originally contained cookies from my intern who, as a gift of appreciation. It's so nice, I didn't want to throw it away. So I thought that, eh, I can just put it together as a little gift set like that. Like that. You can choose your own ribbons and your, your little ornament, whatever that fits your occasion. And inside, okay, I put in some media, all right, and the micro green seeds of choice. And more importantly, in front here, okay, I put a gift card here. Of course, you can also, you know, hand write, decorate your own little um, instructional manual as to how to grow, uh, how to get started with their first micro green seeds. Right. So let me bring you through the steps, okay? What you can do. What, what you can do and put it together. So, um, let's see. Huh? Okay, I have my decorative uh, ornament here. All right. uh, actually, this came from a cake topping. Lah, all right. I salvage it. Then, truth be told, I am not a very good ribbon tire. <laughs> so what I did, I cut short. I used pipe cleaners. Alright, these are all the decorative pipe cleaners that you can buy easily from craft shop or otherwise sometimes, you know, flower arrangement have such things, you I just salvage everything. Alright, so what I have inside here, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit more later. But this container, alright, this is a craft paper lunchbox, which I clean out, okay, from one of my takeaways. So I actually like the craft paper boxes, alright, because you can easily make holes at the bottom and next is that craft paper right you know they are recyclable all right so you can compost it even at the same time so this is uh, the materials you need so let me explain to you how this craft paper box works huh? the bottom you poke holes that will become your growing tray right the top is your greenhouse just now i mentioned to you, to keep the moisture in kind of right so once the microgreens start to grow already, you can actually flip this co top container and put it at the bottom. So it can help you catch excess water. Okay, it doubles up as a tray. Lah, right? So other things that you require right, is, well, get a, a card that fits the box. You don't get something too big, then you cannot close, right? And it's difficult to decorate. And of course, Ziploc bags, you know, we have a lot of Ziploc bags from all kinds of, from all kinds of products. You know, uh, I use my um, medicine Ziploc bag to contain the seeds. Wash it a bit, dry it, ah, okay? Then you can put it together. I put the seeds in. And then, of course, my substrate. Alright. So, what well, I pack enough substrate that will fill the base of the pot. Okay, then... You know, your, your friend wouldn't kind of say, hey, not enough substrate. Eh? <laughs> so now, I put this in first. Next, I put my seeds in. Finally, I put in my card. Then I replace the plastic lid. Okay, like I said earlier, I'm not very good at tying ribbons. Alright? So, Please bear with me, give me some time. I'm going to do it now, okay? <laughs> so now you all know what I'm not good at, tying ribbons. I'm pretty sure some of you watching the video now say, Wilson, that's not the way you do it, I can teach you one day. <laughs> okay, so much easier using pipe cleaners. And you notice one thing is that, I like, I, I, I had coloured pad this thing, alright? Uh, gold goes very well with brown. Okay, that, there is a reason why. So that the whole entire gift box looks, looks good. All right. So I crisscross the ties nicely. All right. The next thing I do is that um, this comes with a clip. Actually, uh, you just clip this on. You see, the gift box is completed. If you follow what I did, this gift box costs less than $5, I think, or even less, depending on how much you recycle or upcycle. 
So you can see that this is a very good gift idea, especially for those of you, you know, in the office, you want to do gift exchange and they give you a budget, you know. What's even better that with these things, it's really personalized, comes from your heart, you know, it's all your ideas and you save the environment. I thought that it's pretty meaningful. It took, it took me a while to think of such a thing. And I thought that I would like to share it with you so that you can, you know, celebrate the year-end festive season with a meaningful, grow your own food growing kit, in this case, the microgreens. Alright, so I hope that um, the session today is useful to you. Uh, microgreens, actually, to be frank, is very easy to grow, you know, very pretty to look at. Alright, and let's do a recap of what you need to make your own, uh, you know, microgreens gift box. Now we come to the Q&A section, all right? I'm pretty sure you have a lot of questions for me. So perhaps while you are actually typing in your questions for me, right? Let's take a look at some common questions that people have asked me before. So why do my seeds germinate and the stems bend and they die after? Okay, so um, when they bend, right? Uh, which part of it did it bend? Did it bend at the base? So let me just give you an example. Let me choose a seedling ah okay i use the sunflower because it's very big so did your seedlings actually bend right at the base okay right at the base you know it narrows and it it, it, it bends over okay so that is actually damping off disease okay so why does that actually happen okay few reasons number one uh, it's caused by a disease causing organism right so let me explain to you First, it could be due to a contaminated substrate, right? That's the reason why we tend to want to use fresh substrate uh, when we start microgreens. And that's the reason why I tell you don't use garden soil to do so because, you know, your garden soil outside there, they will have a lot of pathogens. So that's one reason. Second thing, you know, your seeds might be contaminated as well. So it's important to get seeds from reputable dealers, all right, seed dealers. And, you know, you store it properly and you handle it properly. You know, your hands must be washed and all that because you don't get to touch your garden plants, your soil and all that. Then you handle your seeds and your microgreen substrate. And after that, you contaminate the media. And last but not least, don't overwater. Okay, like I said, always keep your microgreen substrate just moist. A bit like your moist sponge will do. It shouldn't be soggy. All right, so I hope the various reasons I have shared with you helps with your microgreen growing so that it does not have any problems. The next question will be, will my seedlings grow after I cut them? This is a good question, right? Because a lot of times um, people cut really, they thought that it's like a normal plant, you know, you prune it and you will grow. Unfortunately, you know, the growing point of your microgreens is at the top, which you cut and eat it. Right? So leaving the stump. All right? So your microgreen seeds will no longer grow after you cut it at the base. All right? It's a one-time off activity. So what do you do with the stumps? And what do you do with the substrate? Okay? Um, before I go into that, let me just explain to you is that all the seeds will not germinate at the same time. So after you finish cutting, wait for one, two days. Sometimes you may have a couple, one or two seedlings coming up. Okay, you can harvest those and use them in the kitchen. And by, see, by looking at all the stumps when they start to dry, means that they are dying back already. So that's the time whereby you can actually, you know, uh, so-called 
not expect anything to grow for me anymore, right? So, the substrate come the stumps, alright? Uh, I would suggest you to compost them because the media is still quite fresh, alright? So, you, it, they are not exactly used for a long time, right? Only one first time. So, compost them in your garden, okay? The completed compost can be used for your garden use to pot up your plants and to loosen your soil, amend the soil in your community garden, for example, okay? So I hope that enlightens. So the next question I see here is that how long can microgreen seeds last? All right, this is a very good question. All right, so I always tell people here is that don't leave the seeds out in the open for too long. Okay, because inappropriate seed storage method, all right, will lead to you know poor germination rates. Even I give you the freshest seed, all right. Say for example, you forgot about it, you keep it in the garden shed. All right, or you dump it at one corner of your garden where there's moisture and there's heat and all that. So what's going to happen with those, uh, those situations that your seed is going to so-called turn bad, all right? Um, and heat will accelerate the demise of the seed. So when you don't keep your seeds properly, you know, within, within a month or two, probably, you know, they'll lose their viability or the germination will be very erratic. You don't get a massive crop coming up. So I always tell people, you know, Always use up your microgreen seeds within six months of purchase or opening them, all right? And keep any excess seeds that you don't, you don't germinate inside a ziplock bag, okay? And keep it in the fridge, the refrigerator section, four degrees. Don't keep it in the freezer. Don't keep it them in your garden shed. Keep it in the fridge, keep them dry. So as and when you need to grow them again, take out the portion and grow. So another tip here is that don't grow too much of it. I know it looks nice on a big tray with lots of microgreens, but if you cannot finish eating them, you're wasting the seeds, all right? Just portion out what you need and grow them and keep the rest. And of course, after you take them out from the fridge, you know, uh, it's very cold. So there's go going to be condensation. So don't straight away open and take the seeds out and sow them. You should let them, you know, warm up in, at room temperature so that there's no condensation, take the seeds out and sow them before you put them back into the fridge. Of course, there's another good method of doing so is that determine how much you want to grow each time. If you buy one kilogram of seeds, portion out to small little portions. Take that portion out every time to grow rather than take the whole big pack in and out, in and out from the fridge. Okay, so I hope these are some useful tips that I can share with you. All right, so I have another question here. Do I need to wash the harvested microgreens before eating them? I would suggest for food safety reasons, okay, I'm a food scientist by training, I must tell you, yes, it is good that you wash them before eating, especially if you use a substrate. Because substrate contains mic microorganisms, all right? And it's good to give them a wash to wash off any debris, all right? before you consume them, especially if you are going to consume them raw in your salads. It's best to give them a good wash, all right, before consuming them. Okay, the next question I have here is that another food-related question, food science-related question. How do I store microgreens after harvesting? Okay, although this may sound like a common sense to you, all right, and me, but I think I better tell you guys. After you harvest your vegetable, okay, your microgreens, don't wash them if you are going to store them and not eating them right away. You should keep them dry, okay? Store them inside a Ziploc bag, seal it, and put it in the fridge. And when, when you want to eat it or cook it, then you take it out, wash it, all right? And then after that, you do what you need to do, all right? So I hope that uh, enlightens you. This is exactly how you store your harvested leafy vegetables. It's the same concept, okay? The next question here will be, why do my seeds stink so badly after a few days? How much water should I use to soak the seeds? Okay, so if your seeds stink so badly, it tells you something that, you know, um, microorganisms have started to work on it, alright? So there's a few reasons for this to happen. Number one, is your water clean, right? Are you using tap water to, uh, which is clean, right, because it's treated? or the other thing is that are your seeds clean as well at the same time? Because you know, germs can come from, uh, pathogens can come from all sources. So that's, these are the few reasons. And of course, don't, like I said before, don't soak your seeds for too long. 
because when they start to foul, because remember, the seeds themselves contain a lot of energy inside. So microorganisms will want to work on, act on them because it's food to them. So you need to make sure that you clean it out, all right? Uh, you know, like I said, don't, shed, don't soak your seeds for too long. Until the oxygen is gone, then it becomes anaerobic, the, the seed starts to die, and so on, and causing problems, all right? So the next question here is that, what are the pitfalls of using water rather than soil growing microgreens? Okay, I presume you say water is that people sometimes do it hydroponically, all right? So the key to this is that, I want to tell you here is that, Water, you must make sure it has oxygen. All right, because uh, very very often people sometimes soak the seeds in water so that they are hydrated. But then again, if you don't refresh that water, remember just like I told you, don't sit, soak seeds for too long. As they are germin, they, as they are soaking up water and germinating, they need oxygen. So when the oxygen levels are low, it's going to affect seed germination. After they start rotting, then there you have all those issues. That's the reason why I like to use a very fluffy media like cocoa peat or peat moss because it keeps the seeds moist, all right? And then at the same time, you know, it's a very loose media. In between, there are a lot of um, oxygen air pockets, you know? So it keeps the seeds alive and helps with germination, all right? Can. So I hope that enlightens. I have another question here. Can we use easily available seeds like chili, papayas, you know, and le uh, melon seeds for microgreens? Okay, so you see the thing about it is this. Not all seedlings are edible. Okay, for two reasons. One, are the seeds, seedlings edible in the sense as a food? Because it could be a case whereby they could be toxic plants that you shouldn't be eating. All right? And the next reason behind it is that if they are edible and if they are safe to eat, are they good to eat in the first place or not? Because you know sometimes some seeds, unless you are a rabbit or a horse, a herbivore, then you, can, you have the teeth to chew and it's nice to eat. Otherwise, huh, you'll be like chewing grass or maybe cardboard. All right? So there are reasons why certain plants, the seeds, are used to grow microgreens because they are nice to eat. All right? Ken? So I hope that enlightens. Well, today a lot of questions there. <laughs> All right. We still have time. And that's the reason why I purposely leave quite a, uh, keep the demo short and have lots of questions for Q&A. So the next question I have here is that, can I use sunflower seeds soap for consumption as long as they are raw? Okay, so the question here, I mean, uh, uh, the question here is has a multifold here. Okay, I, I need to think how to answer you. Okay, number one, if they are for consumption, number one, like for example, you find in the nuts section or somewhere or like for bird feed, for example. Okay, some of these seeds, they have been kept for too long. All right? Well, you can, by all means, you can try. All right? But the germination rate may not be high. So then what will happen is that if you try to grow such seeds, then what is going to happen here is that, you know, you're going to get an erratic crop. You know, you're not going to get a very bump, nice bumper crop, one or two seedlings. And all. Her germination may not be very good. All right? So I prefer that you buy fresh seeds from a seed dealer for microgreen growing purposes. And of course, like I said, please don't go and buy salted or sugared peanut, roasted peanut to grow. Okay? I know you may laugh now behind the screen. But last time I encountered somebody asking me, hey, how come the peanut seed I grow don't I, I sow don't come out? Then when I asked the person, what you buy? Oh, I buy X and XYZ brand from the nut section. Then show me the packet roasted peanut. Of course cannot germinate lah. Okay, please don't do that. Okay, now, the next question here is that I heard it's hard to grow coriander, okay? How best to grow and harvest coriander? Okay, so coriander is this. Are you growing as a microgreen or are you growing as a herb, okay? Or even a baby leaf, all right? So a lot of times, uh, just to share with you, my, uh, coriander generally is a cool growing crop, okay? A lot of you who have tried growing it in Singapore, you'll notice that it tends to flower very fast when it's very small. So that's the reason why I don't encourage you to grow until big, lah, like you're the normal ones that you buy as a herb uh, from the supermarket or the market. So what you can grow as a baby leaf, let it grow to say, say uh, several centimeters high with small young leaves. You can cut that and put it into a salad, provided you like to eat coriander. Lah. Because I know a lot of people who I know, when you put coriander, they'll take out, take out, take out. I don't like to eat coriander. <laughs> 
All right. So coriander, you can grow it as a microgreen or as a baby leaf. Not too much of a problem, but it's not uh, too rewarding to grow it into a um, big herb that you'll use unless otherwise you choose a uh, boat resistant. That means the ones that are more heat tolerant that will not flower so quickly. Uh, then maybe that is a good choice to grow as a herb. Okay, next question. Are the seeds for microgreens and normal vegetables the same? If yes, then why can't microgreens grow bigger? Alright, I would say in terms of seeds, they are the same, all right? But however, the, di the different cultivars or selections that are meant for microgreens and for vegetables could well be different because not all cultivars of the vegetable that's for growing, when they grow into microgreens, they are nice to eat. Sometimes they can grow too fast, become too fibrous, then they are not nice, all right? Like for example, pea. We always use maple pea seeds to grow your tou miao, okay? There are other peas that you can choose, but people prefer to eat the maple peas sprouts, I mean, microgreens instead. And of course, when you buy seeds for, you know, microgreen growing, make sure that you buy it from, say, maybe an organic food shop, you know, uh, where the seeds are for cooking and for eating or for growing even, or from a reputable seed dealer that sells these seeds for, sprout, uh, for sprouting or for microgreen growing. Okay, the reason behind it is this, you need to know whether the seeds are treated. Because many a times, for normal cultivation growing, uh, like you grow your, say, uh, maybe pea into a big plant or sunflower into a big plant, the seeds could have been treated with chemicals or some other, uh, for, or, or undergone some treatment that make them not safe to eat at that stage when you harvest them as a microgreen. So, the message that I have for you, buy seeds that are meant for microgreen cultivation. Okay. All right. So this is the next question that I have. How much light do microgreens need every day? My house got no direct sunlight. Is it suitable for growing microgreens? Hey, this is a good question. All right. That's the re very reason why I wanted to do this talk. All right. Because a lot of people tell me, hey, Wilson, you know, empaths give all the seeds, huh? you know, gardening with edibles. Then you all say direct sun, direct sun, I need to have allotment garden or what. If I don't want to do all this, I will grow in my own home where I don't have direct sunlight. Precisely this question comes out, right? So therefore, that's the reason why I advocate, all right, the growing microgreens because you only need filtered sunshine, all right? As long as, or even if it's even dimmer, as long as your microgreen can turn green, it's okay, okay? Can really, can eat. And not to mention, even with less light, sometimes the plant or the shoot will be very tender and hence nice to eat. You don't want it to grow until the until it's very tough and then it's full of fiber. Then you tell me, Wilson, are you asking me to eat microgreen or are you asking me to eat dental floss because it's so fibrous? <laughs> okay, of course you can grow it under artificial lights at the same time. So let me just share with you this picture here, okay? You can see that I have two seedlings there. These are sunflower seed or sun seed seedlings or sunflower microgreens. You have these seed leaves, there's the, the, the pair of leaves that you see when the seed first germinate, okay? Generally, we will harvest our microgreens at that stage. But if you forget and you let it continue to grow, the seedling will continue to grow, lah, of course. Then it will produce the next set of leaves, which is what we call true leaves. Okay, the second and the subsequent set, sets of leaves are all what we call true leaves that look like the sunflower plant leaves, lah. okay? So... Generally, I won't, we won't want to have microgreens at that later stage. Why? Because, number one, those of you who eat, who have eat, eaten uh, sunflower seeds, uh, microgreens before, you'll notice that at that stage, okay, what's going to happen is that, you, especially if you eat it raw, all right, the true leaves are a bit hairy. So you are, if you imagine the, the feeling on the tongue is not very nice, eating like they're eating sandpaper. So, that's the reason why we want to harvest it early and young and tender. Then, of course, on the other hand, there are other microgreens that once you allow it to grow further, they are going to become very fibrous, very hard to bite. I'm pretty sure some of you buy tou miao before, right? The pea sprouts. And it is so fibrous, even after you stir fry the thing with heat, uh, it is still like eating dental floss. Correct or not? Yeah? So now you understand. All right. Next question. Why do I get more before even my seeds germinate? 
decay. Again, it could be a case whereby your substrate is contaminated. All right, so you have things growing, uh, the spores are in it. That's why they will start to have uh, mold growing. Then on the other hand, remember just now I told you to cover. All right, that is a, that, uh, sometimes if you cover and if there's too much moisture inside, it can cause mold to grow. So that's the reason why I tell you, don't close tightly. Just replace it. A little bit of hole also fine. A little gap between the containers and the lid is fine. All right. It's not to keep all the moisture inside. Because it's too humid, then you get things like that. And of course, on the, the, the last reason is, of course, if your seeds are, are no longer viable, the seeds spoil already. Lah. All right. So you put it inside, they don't germinate. Of course, the next thing that will happen, they spoil, more will grow. Okay, so fresh seeds, fresh media, that's the best. All right. So the next question I have here is that, can I reuse the substrate? I, my answer to you, to play safe, no. Okay, because like I shared with you earlier, the, uh, you know, once it's exposed to the environment and the seeds may be contaminated and so on and so forth for all the different reasons, it could lead to a case whereby your media has pathogens and then later you don't want to waste your seeds and then lead, leading to poor germination and you don't have a good crop. Okay, next question. Regarding the growing of microgreens, just now I show you the decorative method, right? Huh? Make your thing look nice. Then the, you're, you're very, very um, ob, uh, observant, no? You tell me bow got no hole. Wow, you're good. La. Okay, really? <laughs> yes, go, do I have hole? Alright, so there's two ways of doing so. One, you grow it in this container directly with no hole in the bowl. Alright, you just have to make sure you water enough to keep it moist and you don't have water collecting at the bottom. La. So that is going to be a bit difficult, right? Of course, I'll tell you lah, for this demo, I play cheat lah. I cannot say I play cheat lah, okay? To be frank, I knew what is going to happen. So what I did was that actually I grow it in another container with drainage holes that's of this size. All right? Once they grow, I transfer over into this decorative bowl for my demo and for your case, decoration at home for the dinner table. You can do that. Okay, so therefore you will not have the issue of water accumulating at the bottom. Smart, right? Okay. Next question. Well, a lot of questions today. Okay. How do, can you actually do bottom watering, uh, bottom up watering before the seeds germinate? Yes, you can. Okay, say for example, uh, well, uh, like this one, right? Just now, I got cut holes at the bottom, right? I gave you the example. Yes, you can, right? Because some of you, when you say you water from the top, uh, some of you, your watering can, like waterfall like that. You know what I mean? Some people, like, you know, the watering can, uh, the hole so big, uh, when you pour like tsunami like that, all the seeds, vroom, don't know wash until where. Okay, I know. So therefore, what you can do is that, if you have holes at the bottom, all right, what you can do is that, you can have a tray of water, ready? Just put this on the tray. Let it sit there for about five minutes. Let it soak all the water up. Later, you bring it out and put it another, into another place where it's growing. Lah. So at least it helps to soak up the water and keep the, uh, the substrate moist without washing the seeds away like a tsunami. I know you're laughing there, lah, but a lot of you do that, right? Correct? Mm. Okay. Where do I get peat moss or cocoa peat? You can buy from online uh, shopping platforms. Ah, you all know, right? Singapore Garden Festival, we got e-marketplace, correct or not? Okay, go to our website, go and find the e-marketplace and go and search for cocoa peat and peat moss, okay? SGF e-marketplace, go and find. You can buy from many, many vendors over there. But of course, you can go down to your favorite nursery, right? And go and buy the required substrate. All right, the next question here I have is that, can microgreens be grown indoors using LED lights? Sure, this is something that, to be frank, a lot of our urban farms in Singapore are doing, right? So you can do so using, micro, uh, using grow lights, but unlike growing herbs like I shared with you last time and all other things that I shared, I got I did so many talks, right? So you can actually use lesser tubes to grow your microgreens. I shared with you, they don't need a lot of light, correct? So therefore, just put one or two tubes far apart and you just grow, as long as they're able to turn green, don't, don't become overly etiolated or soft and fall over, right? The intensity is sufficient. So that's the reason why 
microgreens are ideal for people who you know don't have a lot of light, don't want to have a lot of time, don't want to have complicated setups, don't want to have time, don't want to deal with pests and disease to grow. Okay, so you can grow it on your desk even at, at your workplace. Healthy eating, right? Some of you, you can just cut and put it in your salad and tell your boss, you see, I don't need to go to the market and buy vegetable. Then everybody, and you can even start a micro green growing community uh, at home. All right? Or when you go back to work, you can even do that as an office community gardening activity. Good, right? Okay, I don't have much time already. Huh? Wow, you all keep hearing me. Okay. The, la the second last question, probably I'm going to tackle because not much time. Eh? Cannot overrun. You want to go eat dinner, right? Okay. So, the tissue paper method also 1 to 2 cm thick. Okay. Good question. Wow, you're all very observant. Are you actually doing it at home now? That's why you ask me these questions. Okay. So, the, the tissue paper method I teach you. Get a thick tissue paper lah, for the bottom uh, layer. Put your seeds. Then you put another layer of tissue paper on top. Maybe two layers. So all in all is four. Two at the bottom, four at the top. You need to put another layer on top. Why? Because it has to keep the upper surface of the seeds moist also. You cannot keep the bottom moist only. You must keep both sides moist, then they will germinate better. All right. Thank you for listening to me and you stayed for till this time. I thank you for it. My last question that I'm going to tackle for the day is that how do you make the sprouts like the tauge? Fat like the ones that you get from the market. Why wow, y'all huh? Getting free consultation, right? Wow, your question like free one, just shoot them. Yeah. Okay, I will answer. This is the last question. All right, how do you do it? It's actually to be frank, very simple. People actually grow their tauge under pressure. Okay, uh, I have been to a tauge farm before. Okay, the bean sprout farm. All right, so what they do is that they grow in barrels. So basically, when the seeds are germinating, you need to keep them tight so that they will become thick. All right. So that's the key to it. Go home and try it. People have used uh, teapots. You know, they grow the, they put the seeds inside, and then they close it in the teapot, and then because the lid and the container is enclosed, the seeds as they germinate, grow bigger, they will become fatter. Okay, so that's the way to get your fat sprouts. Okay, and to be frank, you know your your mung bean sprouts, your tauge sprouts that you eat are not from your green beans. Okay, wow! Now everybody start asking me, right? Hey, y'all have y'all go and look at the seed coat of the tauge now. The seed coat not green one, eh? Green is green bean, ha? Ah. Black color seeds is actually another kind of mung bean that the seeds are black. Alright? Go and look out for that seed. Well, today a lot of information shared. Alright, so I have I think I have to end here because time is running out. So this brings us to the end of this uh, talk and this session. Okay, as you have observed earlier, you know, microgreens is actually a lot easier to grow than all the other plants that we've been talking about, especially some of the edibles. Okay, so I hope with this knowledge, okay, you can give it a try, right? With, with more trials, tests, uh, trial and error and all that, I'm pretty sure you will attain success one day. And then, of course, you will become more confident. And of course, my parting shot to you, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for spending your Sunday with me today. Okay, for more resources on gardening, flourishment, aquascaping and more, Okay, please check out our MPARC's SG YouTube channel. I'm Marcel Goyo, you know, because there's a lot of effort that has gone into doing all these videos. Alright, so have a good weekend and goodbye.